Hey everyone, Zeph and Moses here, and I'm here with Dan at the Black Magic booth. And today we're going to talk a little bit about all this new equipment that was just announced this past week. And going into NAB, we've had a chance to take a peek at it out on the floor. So Dan, tons and tons of updates, right? There's ATEM updates. There's a new panel to look at. There's 2110 updates. Let's maybe start with just some quick, you know, what happened with the ATEMs? What have we seen come out? And then maybe we'll talk a little bit about 2110 sure. and the importance of that in the workflow. Yeah, a couple, couple kind of easy updates for us. We, you know, we've been putting out new ATEM constellations. We will plant like these great rack mounted units with SDI. You know, we have our ATEM minis, which are awesome. We have HDMI and SDI versions of those, but the constellations for us add just a little bit more functionality for us and these being rack mounted. So we've got our uh, 1ME 4K and our 2ME 4K. This is just gonna add uh, another bit of our family for those constellations. For those that are looking for a little bit larger what the minis are gonna be able to give you, don't have to step up to our big 4ME uh, sure. solutions that are out there. So those are two new units we have shipping now, We're really excited about that. But of course, because they're constellations uh, being rack mounted units, you can always use the software. Our ATEM software is very powerful. Um, and we've had our 1ME panels, 2ME panels, yep. you know, those have all been out. Uh, we've now come out with our new uh, micro panel, and this is going to be great for the folks that are either using those A10 minis but with like a little more professional controls. Like I've definitely used those A10 minis, and like when it's easy, it's easy. Yeah. And when it's not easy, it gets a little, it can be much. It's nice to have a kind of a four micro panel that has the strong buttons that you'll find like on our 1ME panels, 2ME panels. And they're the same exact buttons. They're so the same exact same buttons. Feel. It's going to give you all that same feel if someone's moving where they... The other part with this is because it's kind of like this flatter unit doesn't have the big T-bar and whatnot. It's, it's actually like the same size as an extreme. It, it is. So, it. so it's it's more portable, luggable. Like I don't want to make it sound like you couldn't take a big 1ME with you, but yeah. that is a bigger unit to just take around. So being able to drag this out, whether it's with an ATEM mini or you're using it with one of our constellations that you have a physical control. Uh, you know, these three kind of ATEM updates are pretty exciting. And, and you know, they're, they're simple because they're just very black magic. Right. They're a lot of value in what we're doing. People look at it and go like, that's a great idea. So, you know, those are pretty simple updates for us this year. And I think now having 4K in the constellations, it's a good step for anybody that maybe has the SDI extreme and they're they're already on the SDI workflow. Right. They just want to kind of step it up a notch, have something rack mounted. Like me personally, that was kind of my jump was I had an extreme and then I said, you know what, let's build a rack case. We've got our Hyperdex in there for recording. That's right. We've got dual monitors built into it. So just one case that has everything. Yeah, it's always it's always fun for Black Magic where we can kind of say like, let's tie all this Black Magic here. Hey, I can do all of this. I can do Hyperdex. I can do ISO recordings. I can go ahead and heck, I can go ahead and dump all those ISO recordings into Resolve and have them all laid out. like. The advantage that Blackmagic has is being able to tie all these technologies together and put them in a way that other companies maybe can't because they're just focused on one kind of product line. So it's always fun for us to tie, hey, I want a smart view, I want a hyperdeck, I want to do all that stuff, and, and use those technologies together in a way that is just really unique. And being someone that I run off of that 1ME advanced panel quite a bit, but that thing fits into a gigantic Pelican, Pelican vault case. Pelican case, yeah, exactly. And the vault case is, you know, probably twice as big as the advanced panel itself. Yes, just to that's fit right. it and pad it, protect it. So that having that smaller panel, the micro panel, and I feel like I could probably throw that into a backpack yeah. at this point. Yeah, the, the idea would literally be that you're taking around like your laptop bag and you can put a couple of things in a kind of a bigger laptop bag and just set up and start doing production. So that's the goal and we'll see how people end up using it. It's always fun to see what people end up doing once yeah. you put it out there. And I saw that functions a little bit differently in that the advanced panel connects over ethernet, but with the micro panel, it's Bluetooth to your computer and then it can control the Blackmagic ATEM software from there. That's right. We have a, we have a couple different ways of being able to control these things. So you know what, how people are going to want to do it is always the like. Well, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Right. People there. will find a way. But we wanted to put a couple options for people to cho choose how they'd like that. To and go. so that's got a built-in battery. So I could charge that up USB-C and have that running for a day yep. just off battery. Yeah. The theory the theory is you want to like so. You know, we leave them plugged in at the show to make sure that they're charging. And then we take the cable away for most of the show so that it night looks nice and clean. But of course, you have to make sure that your battery level is going to be good. So sure. your live event, the last thing you want to have happen is the battery dies. So yeah. being able to have that USB-C gives you that confidence that you can just have it plugged up and charging the whole time as well. So again, people will find what they'd like to do with it. And yeah. we're just giving them that option. I think it's nice it'll give some more flexibility in the field. I know some people live stream funerals or other events that are not exactly in a place where you have access to power. That's right. Not in a place where you can just set it down on a table. So if you've got a rack mount case already, being able to pull out the micro panel, sit it on top of the rack, and you're yeah. good to start switching. We look forward to seeing how people are going to use these. Very cool. And so moving right along, you know, exciting stuff there. And then there's some cameras launched. We have two new cameras. Yep. Two new cameras. And these are really cinema-style cameras. But, you know, 
that can always be used in different ways. We have our new Pixis box camera. People who are familiar with our pocket cameras and our cinema camera 6K, they've always had these really handheld run and gun type of feel. The Pixis is really our first box camera. Um, it's something that we want to make very configurable so people can configure that any way they'd like. If you are familiar with our cinema camera 6K, it's the same sensor, same functionality you're gonna all find in there, but now in this box camera. The one important thing with this camera is it's three different lens mounts. So you kind of right. have to buy the lens mount you want. But you some know, flexibility you there can, based on what lenses you have. That's already. right, and you can always do adapters, but it's not an interchangeable lens mount. As opposed to when you look at our big camera, our Ursa Cine 12K, this is really our top of the line cinema camera. It's, it's the, you know, when we think a lot about Blackmagic products, we think, how do I build the best camera for $1,000? Right. And we try to push as much as we can in, but we're very price sensitive because we want to empower as many people as possible. We went the other direction here. We said, how do we put everything we've ever wanted? Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. removable cartridges, re-adding back the, uh, the assist station. So we've done everything we can to push into this camera, um, and that reflects in the price of $15,000, which sure. is still not an insane amount of money. It's but a 6K camera, too, at $3,000. Yeah, so exactly. there's definitely an option for entry and then work your way, That's like right. with the attempt, you work your way That's up That's right. You know, one of the great parts about Blackmagic is we're trying to, when we say empower creatives, does that mean empower a YouTube video that's trying to start with a free copy of Resolve and just using their phone? Or does that mean I'm trying to empower a Hollywood creator that's going sure. out and saying, look, I could get five of these cameras and just own them and shoot all the movies I want and not ever have to pay a rental again. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean it's just one type of creator. Right. And that's a, that's a real tricky thing for Blackmagic to have to navigate trying to help all, cre all creators, <laughs> like Resolve is used by Hollywood, but it's used by my son doing video animation and he's 12 years old <laughs> awesome. with Legos. So it's like, it's a, it's a big challenge for us, but like obviously we feel it's gone pretty well. That's awesome. And the last big update is 2110, which I'm still relatively new to. I have those three by three G boxes. Yep. One Cat7 cable is giving me three SDI feeds this way, three SDI feeds that yep. way. Kind of like fiber in a sense where I, I can send six signals over one cable. Yeah and you guys launched a whole bunch of other stuff to go along with that and starting to yeah, build out that ecosystem. Talk to me about, there's there's like a presenter box now that yeah. we can put up at like a lectern or a podium up front. Yep. There's a few other converters. So what kind of came out there and maybe where does 2110 fit into that like that person who's graduating taking that next step in the ATEM and live streaming space? Yeah, so, you know, we typically think like SDI video is a really stable way of sending video around, right? It's frame after frame, it's very consistent, you're not worried about network things, um, but it has some limitations in and of itself, right? If I'm gonna do, going back to the camera, I need that secondary cable, obviously it doesn't carry any kind of power, and, and these are things that by going to the 2110 IP solution, you can just have the one cable, and it can right. be bi-directional, and it can carry power. But it is a little more complex because you're now sending packages as opposed to frame after frame type of video. So there's some complexity to there. Um, also, you know, people are trying to solve this solution of how to do video over these type of network type of cables. Um, we are putting out a codec that is basically a standard codec, except for on the highest frame rates and resolutions, where we're doing a light bit of compression. But we've made this codec free and available to everybody. So we're hoping that other manufacturers will go ahead and pick this up and start implementing it as well. It's just a free codec that they can go ahead and solve this problem. But the big thing for us is, last year we came out with these, a few of these products based off of, hey, we think we can start solving some of these problems. This year was the, look, we need to solve all the problems. Yeah. We need to take care of all the distribution. We need to take care of all the acquisition. We need to take care of all of these different things so that no one can say, well, I can't use your 2110 solutions because you didn't bleh. Or you need other equipment to go into the that, next. That, I know you guys launched a, an Ethernet that, switch That's right. Too, so, so. so that's exactly it. So when we talk about, hey, we need to take a, talk about distribution. So we've got a, our own Ethernet switch so that we can go ahead and route these things around. We came out with converters so that we can just convert the, the 2110 to HDMI or SDI to 2110 back and forth. Um, we've got larger uh, 2110 so solutions that are, are there for all the distribution. Then we had to go ahead and update our older products. So anyone that already has one of our later studio cameras, anyone that has a HyperDeck, those all have Ethernet on there. We just made them update to 2110. So people could start using, if you have a studio camera already at home with a HyperDeck, you can just stick an Ethernet cable with an update and now start working with 2110. Oh, that's great. So we started dealing with 
with that, we came out with new monitoring products. You know, our Smart View 4Ks, our audio monitors are already really popular. Now we've added Ethernet on there that's 2110 capable as well. So when you build your next rack, you can just put 2110 between all of those. So coming out with this really full solution to be able to say, look, you can now connect all these things if you were to choose just using these network cables and being able to hook those all up. Now the presentation product that you've mentioned is a really cool product because this is really kind of a, in a very generic layman's turn, a kind of everything to everything type of converter. Yeah, but almost the, like a stage box for audio people where you've got a lot of input output that so, can so come like, back to you. So like the ideal, like as someone that has to go present things, it's always annoying when they're like, well, send us your presentation because we want to have everything working. You know, what I want to do is I want to bring my laptop up, hook it up, and it just works. Yeah. And I want the next person to bring their laptop and it hooks up and it just works. So the idea here of being able to have a presenter that can just put a computer in and it works and then that can be sending maybe SDI off to a switcher and the switcher wants it just to be 1080 and it just works mm. and then the projector could be taking some other different HDMI feed but that wants to be 720 and that just works and like these are all those problems when you start dealing with I got multiple computers I've got a switcher I've got a monitor and compatibility frame yeah frame rates and this is a box that we're hoping is going to solve this problem for people it has the 2110 has okay. SDI has HMI so uh Again, kind of just flushing out that solution, but in a, it's different for us because it's not like a, it's not like a live production product. It's not like a post-production product. It's a conference room product. Like yeah. it's a product that's just using all this technology. Again, this is all problems, which is what Black Magic's sure. for. So, so excited to get that product. Hopefully, going out. It's a couple months away, but we're we're okay. excited about it. So we'll see that, that a little bit later. Le this year. Midsummer, hopefully, we'll start seeing that one out there too as well. Very cool. Well, a lot of exciting stuff. We're here at NAB to take a peek at it all. We'll have some shots that we can show off to everybody. Definitely especially that micro panel for sure, and the presenter units here too. So yep. we can take a look at that. Very good. Awesome. Exciting times for creators and a lot of exciting things coming from Black Magic. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.